Broadcasting from the heart of the National Forest for North West Leicestershire, this is Hermitage FM. Oh, I don't know, you kind of settled into the programme and all of a sudden a group of people come in and you're going, where are you all going to sit? So we're trying to sit them down in a group. Uh, eight miles high. Eight miles high. Eight miles high, yeah. Eight miles high. Yeah. Uh, That's easy for you to say. Uh, yeah, not... not uh, not this time of day, it's not. Right. Uh, how are we doing, guys? All right, generally yeah. speaking, yeah. yeah, yeah. Found, the, yeah. found the place all right and everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was all right. In the dark? In the dark, it wasn't too bad. And we've got <laughs> an EP, we're going to play oh, two or three tracks in the next uh, 25 minutes. Are you prepared? Mostly. Or do you prepare for interviews? I, I guess you prepare for gigs. I, I'm not sure you prepare for interviews. This is our first one, isn't it? You have to lean yeah. in, you see. Yeah, yeah, this is our is first uh, interview, so. It's wow. not ever your first ever interview, is it? Yeah. yeah. Radio. How about we have a routine where you uh, talk and I talk? Yeah. <laughs> first, Josh, go on. Uh, yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, so this is our first. Interview. Okay. Do you want to introduce yourself uh, and and say what you do in the band? That will be useful for everybody else listening, wouldn't it? Okay. Uh, I'm Oliver, and I'm the lead guitarist and lead vocalist. Uh, I'm Josh, and I'm the bassist. I'm Harry, and I'm rhythm guitarist. I'm Elliot, and I'm the drummer. Yeah, Ooh. Elliot's the furthest away. He's got yeah. to, is he the tallest? He's got to lean no, in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's you, is it, really? It's usually the drummer's usually on the end, because they usually say he's, he's the quietest. Is that, <laughs> yes. is that the case in this no, one? No, 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 we've had to, oh. we, we're making him quiet. Um, oh, right. We, 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 if he wants to speak, he needs to look at us, and we will give Smell him confirmation of that. Right, he likes to ask, ask for permission. Yes, basically, yeah. <laughs> uh, I had the pleasure of introducing you at Glastonbury uh, yes, you did, earlier yeah. this year, actually. You were kind of near the top of the bill. We were the and last, it, yeah. A, it was a... It was a a were rocking, you rocking? Yeah, because we couldn't remember whether it was. Uh, which day were you on again? Sunday. It very merged, last. After a while, it merges into one. You see. Yeah, it was twenty to ten, I think it was. We yeah. were the last act of the building. Really? Yeah, That's... it was quite an experience. Mm. Was that a good slot then to be in? Do you think? Yes, it was. It was quite something to close. If, well, close the show. Yeah, it was a very nice experience. And when we went on, it was just. That's the thing with gigs, you know, regardless of what gig is, if it's a pub or if it's Glaston budget, the minute you go on the nerves, just, yeah. they're gone, yeah. and you just do what you do. It's yeah, brilliant. I think once you walk on stage and you're doing your thing, you can settle down, can't you? Yes, it's just, it's did, just, it was amazing. Did you get a good crowd then? Did yes, you? surprisingly, we thought that the weather might uh, distract a few of the viewers, but um, hmm. no, a good crowd turner. We just went round the, the whole... A venue pestering everyone tell us to quickly come see us come on come see us on at sunday at this time uh and we were surprised actually by how many people turned up to see you us. talk about nerves who's the worst at nerves uh, of, the, of the band probably me yeah. really i think i'm the worst because you've got to be up front is that it well it's it's i don't know if it's nerves about messing up it's more or less nerves of getting on stage and just you know hurrying up. not falling over yes <laughs> although i have forgotten the lyrics a few times as well that's so are you nervous about this as well then or were you um, yeah, nervous walking up the stairs there. Uh, it, felt like <laughs> forever, it felt like forever to get up the stairs. Um, but no, as soon as, you know, talking now, I feel pretty so fine. quite calm and relaxed. Yeah, it's the yeah. others that so. are nervous, because you're doing all the talking. Sorry, it's yeah. Just it's, in the, it's just in my way, really, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, shall we play a track just to introduce because um, you, you get played on the radio a little bit these days, do you? Um, we might Once. do. Some, yeah. Somewhere, maybe. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's play uh, Days of Glory. Who's going to tell us about the song? Um, Let one of the others do it. Go on. Well, do you know the story o- behind well, Ollie, it? Ollie writes them. So. Uh, uh, oh, you've got to do it then. Well, it's just it was the first song that uh, we ever wrote as a group, and it was it was a song that I wrote out of boredom. So <laughs> here we go. Well, Day, Days of Glory, uh, eight miles high. Just as we need some room. We live in a world And it's surviving on cold Plus the money, yeah Well, it's the same story Where have you gone?
grief nor love of the sorrow And a plan to make amends And an on to tie with friends No oppression did I mention Cause ultimatum's gonna cause attention Examine the right to hate it. Alliances are in need of create Justice Miles are from their EP Heartbroken Diary. That's a track called uh, uh, Days of Glory, and the group are in the studio. And Kevin's with them. I am indeed. Welcome, chaps. Again. Hello, Kevin. Um, Hello. I'll just get, so Days of Glory, classic track. What was it about then? Do you think it was my attempt? Uh, thank you, Josh. It was my attempt at, at a Green Day track because Green Day were always writing uh, politically inspired lyrics, a bit like American Idiot. Okay. So one day I was in my history lesson, all these posters around the room with words like um, censorship and all this so I was writing them down remembering them and then going to the band later saying look what about these lyrics and all that and that's pretty much it mm. oh, okay so is that how you write your, well is that generally the sort of places that you get your inspiration from that's how I used to, that's it, that's how I used to get inspiration from them because the first few songs were uh, inspired by Green Day because it's normally me that writes them and my music changes varied over the course of the years um, so some songs will be inspired by Green Day some by Jimi Hendrix John Mayer and some by other pop bands do, do as well. you know then what you want from the other members of the band or do, do they contribute by saying well what if we did this and that well, yeah, well that's I will write because I'm pretty set on guitar I write uh, mine and Harry's bits 
and then I will write a you know a template of a drum track, and then I'll write something for bass. But I don't know how to play those instruments, and then I'll say to Elliot and Josh, "Here you are. You do what you want with it." And you know, 100% and, and of the do. time, yeah, 100% <laughs> of the time they make it better. So you know, that's what they're there for, I guess. Is it hard work being a young band in Leicester? Do you think? Um, it can be sometimes. It's not too bad at the minute, but like sort of balancing college and obviously we we uh, do a lot of gigs really for our age so uh but i think we do pretty well at it to be honest there's a reason yeah. i ask that because a number of times i go to like quite quiet gigs where there aren't many people there and i think well these bands must have put in a lot of effort um to do this music for not many people to turn up um do you get yourselves in that sort of situation at all? Like uh, yeah we've had a few gigs where it's been like uh four people or so but the amount of pub gigs has so, been like that yeah so how how does that affect your performance, or does it? Well, when there's uh, well when there's people there that we uh, know and that we'll play we we do play well we'll, we'll put 100 percent into every gig I'd say we'll, yeah yeah but if there's people there that we get along with and know then we'll obviously perform better for them. I think actually sometimes if if there aren't a lot of people there we normally kind of go listen lads it's tr- treat it as a practice you know just but then it's normally about the second set where some people do actually start to turn up and, but, you but know, I don't know a band do I? I mean I'm reading the book about you two at the moment and that most bands that are successful have been through that route of yeah. playing to nobody because that's how they learn their trade and they can make mistakes and they learn what they're doing don't they like, when they're in their younger days like yourself compared to you two thanks <laughs> um, <laughs> If we do make mistakes, uh, well, oh god, it's normally me that makes mistakes. Uh, messing lyric. up, messing up Being lyrics. Being the lead guitarist. And uh, no, not guitar. It's my lyrics that uh, I mess up all the time. Or if Elliot messes up something, it's just you know you you learn from it. And you keep going regardless of it. if you make the mistake. You don't stop and have a fit. You just you keep going because that's what you got to yeah, do. Yeah, because the audience probably won't notice anyway. Will if they? it's an original, yeah, they don't yeah. notice. They just think it's part of the song. That's true. If it's a cover, they will do. Probably. But how much focus on, uh, I guess, you know, because you're, you're kind of at college now, I guess later on it's then about trying to get a deal or trying to get exposure some somehow, somewhere, and having people to point you in the right direction, I guess, is quite important as well, isn't it? We have had we have had that, uh, the occasional uh, people that come up after a gig and tell us all about these uh, promotion uh, gigs and all these people. That's, that's how the shed came into it, because, you know, people were telling us all about the shed and then... We started doing the shed, then people telling us all go here and go there, and then we go to those places, and then people keep um, pointing us in different directions. Hopefully, one of the directions will be yeah, getting you know somewhere really big. And what about have you? Do you play out of, outside of Leicester at all? We've had a few yeah, we've had a few. Do you want to explain? Uh, yeah, we do. Started to do more this year than last year. We've played in um, Stamford. We're playing in Flackney next weekend. We played played Birmingham last year. Bo- we? Yeah, we played in Birmingham with. Uh, and Midnight called Wire. The Tonics oh. and Midnight Wire because yeah. you've got quite a following here now haven't you yeah well, I would like to think so but um, so yeah we're just wherever we uh, can get gigs on really we'll yeah. happily go to So, but that's important isn't it? You know, keeping your home crowd happy as well and getting them involved and uh, how long has this EP been around now that's a year, isn't just, it? Just yeah. under a year. Just, yeah. I think, yeah, about a year, just under a year, something like. Yeah, just under a year. Yeah. So you're working on another one. Yes. Um. Hopefully that will start to be recorded this month or maybe next month. We've got the songs sorted, haven't we? Yeah. Cool. All five tracks sorted. Uh, it's just a matter of getting into the studio and getting them done. Okay. So what? Where do you go to do that? Uh, Aspect Studios. Uh, guy who works there. Great guys. He was the one that some of the harmonies that you might hear on the. Uh, Heartbroken Diary EP that weren't there before and he would sit with me and tell me what to do and he'd, he would say oh sing this sing that note so he's a great guy but I guess for young bands that's key isn't it you go to a studio you want to know how it works and it's so different to, to doing live stuff it's, yeah it's nice to have you know someone else you know someone else's perspective on a song because you know it's only us really that hear them you know constantly practising them uh at, you know Harry's house, and then eventually someone yeah. else to come up to us and say, "Oh, you know, something there might be a little bit better, or something like that." So it is nice to get another ear involved. And I guess parents are quite uh, supportive, aren't they as well? I mean, you've got uh, yeah. a guy next door who's probably beeping not paying, Tom in not the other pay, room, not paying attention, but uh, <laughs> having people to drive you around and stuff like that. Is that- yeah, uh, I think they do that pretty religiously, I guess. But yeah, they are very, very supportive of us, and we're obviously very lucky to. Uh, 
have parents that do support us in that way else we'd be in a bit of trouble to be honest because you're all quite young aren't you how old roughly are you what's well, the average got age drummer, drummer on the end there 17 he's very 16. quiet yeah. Oh, wait, oh, but yeah because he's not allowed to talk is he <laughs> uh, we've got <laughs> Elliot and Josh um, no, sorry, Harry and Joshua are 16, and, and I'm 17. Josh is 17 now. Oh, you're 17, sorry, I keep sorry. thinking you're 16, mate, sorry. <laughs> you obviously didn't go you. to the party. No. No. He's not invited <laughs> out often. I'm not, I don't have a life. <laughs> what would you say is your best gig you've done to date so far, in your young career? I'd, in my opinion, I'd say Glastonbury, actually, Glastonbury Audition, the, yeah. no, the one we've just done recently. I quite, well, I, I felt oh. our... Um, EP launch last year was a really good gig. Um, I'd say even I like drums. <laughs> That's Elliot. He's not allowed to talk. He's not allowed to talk. You can see why he's been so quiet now. Um, I, I like drums too. Drums are good, aren't they? I guess gig. Uh, I get a favourite gig is a combination of uh, the audience reaction and how you think you played and the sound. Mm. Isn't it? It's, it's a lot of things all together, isn't it? Well, yeah. I'll get a pub gig that I'll say that was my best vocal performance, or Ellie might say a yeah. gig was his best drum performance. But I think, in my opinion, the our recent Glaston budget audition, I think everything was on point. Mm. And you know, when you get so you better get on now. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. I was just reading a review actually about your Glaston budget audition from Music in Leicester. Oh yeah, um, it's good old travel. Yeah, and he, he writes as Eight Miles High started their first song, the audience spont- spontaneously started to clap along with the music. I thought you were oh, going to say combustion. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good we are, my That's friend. Brilliant. <laughs> no, it's it's you know it's important that the crowd respond to us and because we have such a following and we've played at the shed countless times we're kind of regulars there I guess but um, no but um, we love our fans and they're really positive and they do follow us around I guess So how did the audition go though? Did, do you Have you got a slot at next year's Glaston budget? Or we do you not get told in yet? December am yeah, I right? Yeah, mid-December Late oh. to mi- mid to late December so um, well, It's only but, next month so oh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, only next month Fingers crossed you sound like it's miles <laughs> yeah. away oh, God that's how long it that's how long it feels does it yeah it's so tense actually the time where the day it was told of uh, another band that had been interviewed here Beneath the Lights yeah um, I know them very well uh, yes I was on the phone to them because they told me they just got their Glaston budget place booked and I was sitting oh. looking at my phone for hours going oh my god <laughs> do, oh my and do god. they tell you what stage you're going to be on at the same time yes um, I think they did didn't they I can't actually remember because Beneath the Lights played uh, didn't Big they? Top, top. Big Top mm. didn't they have they got there again then we're no, not sure. So. Not like, sure. Everyone no. sort of finds out uh, late December, I think. So, if, yeah, you if, you, if you had a choice, which would be the stage you'd want to play on? Main oh. stage. Main <laughs> stage. <laughs> but, but why? But everybody said. I, I, yeah. In fact, actually, quite a lot of them said the big top because if it rains, you're inside. Yeah. But the and smell the, is but the, awful. No, but the acoustics, the, the acoustics in there are very good. The sound quality the that atmosphere. beneath the lights got. We yeah. and there's another oh, another band called Antarctic Monkeys. Yeah. When they performed there, it was just fantastic. Yeah, the atmosphere in there is amazing, isn't it? It I'd is, say it is the best pretty amazing. Yeah. Out of the whole, I've, all the other stages. I think I'd say if it's a nice day, I think I'd prefer uh, uh, Icon Stage on Saturday night. I'd uh, the enjoy. Icon Stage was nice. That's one we performed on, and it was. Yeah. I might get to introduce you again then, because yeah. I've been booked Ho- to do it again. Hopefully, so. yeah. Um, but the Icon Stage was fantastic, and to yeah. get you know to we like to say we headlined it because well we did kind well, of well you did <laughs> yeah um, you have to say but it was to, to get say. to get you know you know it was twenty to ten at night last day of the whole festival it was quite something it was a really really amazing feeling yeah yeah and you mm. did go down very well yes we did I did enjoy it although the smoke machine someone needs to have a word with that man <laughs> <laughs> what was it too much to oh, I couldn't me. see the crowd I couldn't see the crowd at all oh all right. Oh, that's a shame okay right. let's play ninety eight percent okay why not hundred percent um, yeah, 98% was, was about a cliche uh, about a relationship that I had and that's all I'm going to say <laughs> only enjoyed 2% of it uh, <laughs> yes I guess you can say that <laughs> ok here we go I'm 
I really like that one. 98%. Uh, that's by um, uh, 8 Miles High. They're in the studio from their EP, A Heartbroken Diary. Uh, now, as uh, off air, I was kind of asking the question about the new uh, EP, whether you thought it was a progression, how different it is to what we've heard there. And you've been thinking about the answer for a little while. Yeah, because... So, so what do you think? Because, well, we actually, as we were downstairs waiting to uh, come up here, we were... Um, described as like indie rock which is a bit you know alternative indie rock Alter- yeah alternative yeah read from indie your rock. facebook page. and um <laughs> yes i did that was ages ago because well at the start we used to be all pop punk didn't yeah. we and then i'm very keen as i write songs that all different kind of different genres because you know if you played heartbroken diary it's quite a country rock kind of thing but as that you can hear it's quite a heavy rock song but so are I'm you aiming for a sound as a band then or are you just aiming to be kind of a little bit each song has its own kind yeah. of theme i think each song has its own theme is, an, is a nice way to describe us yeah i think we might use that from now on. <laughs> uh, okay and, you, and you, maybe in a different oh, genre. i need a quote on the back <laughs> yes cover. you can have that yeah <laughs> Each song has a different theme. Yeah. So, so each song could be a different, slightly different genre. Then is what you're saying as well. Yeah, if you definitely. I'm not keen yeah. on. I'm not keen on this genre thing. You see, I well, that's th- it, it's different inspirations. Yeah. You know, um, when I was listening to uh, the reason why I wrote Heartbreak and Diary was I was listening to a, a track where I forgot who wrote it, but Ain't No Sunshine, and it's uh, someone did a version of it, and I thought that's a really, you know, that's a really nice, you know, vibe, and I just thought, you know, I'd. You know, take inspiration from that and then write it. But you know, ninety-eight um, percent was inspired by a bit of Led Zeppelin. You know, so wow. Wow. I, I actually thought that right at the end of the yeah. track. Yeah, you can. There's a bit, I mentioned there's Led a, Zeppelin. I, there's a bit of cashmere at the end of that. Yeah. someone's told me, and that's completely by accident. Uh, I probably I was going to ask you about influences <laughs> as well. That was my next question. So, do you have particular ones? We all have. I think that's an advantage. Actually, we all have different yeah. inspirations, mm. so we can bring new things to the band. So, if we all want to go. From left to right is what we're inspired by. Elliot, um, say the right answer. Anything from One Direction to Iron Maiden. He, I'm that's inspired. that's not a lie. He genuinely likes that. He looks more like an Iron Maiden person. Yeah, he is yeah, an Iron not, Maiden. Yeah. Harry, what do you like? Uh, I listen to a lot of uh, Blink One Eight Two and Arctic Monkeys kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I listen to quite a bit of solo bass stuff and then things like Lower Than Atlantis and Muse. And uh, I'm a massive John Mayer fan. Okay, uh, Kevin, we may as well yes. go around the room. What's, what are you listening to these days? Me? Well, the last one I listened to was a bit of Eight Miles High and a bit of Jonesy as well. Oh, actually. Thank I you very listen to him. I'm a bit, um, of, a, I'm a, bit of a Royal Blood fan. Oh, oh love, a, like, love a bit of Royal Blood. Yeah, I do like them. And uh, I saw a, a band called The War on Drugs on Jules Holland last week. I don't know whether they're, they're an American band, they've just come over here. Definitely worth checking out. I have, to, I have to, yeah. yeah. The war on drugs. There you go. We've all had yeah. to say now. Yeah. We? Okay, well, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you no, for having us. I, I might have to keep you here because I'm not sure what's happening next. That, that, that's no. fine. We were, well, we should, we we were waiting be... for Jonesy to ring up. Yeah. Can we talk a bit so more? So, Jonesy, if you're listening, ring up. Come and on, then, Jonesy. Keep up, man. And we'll then we'll be getting our next guest in as well, won't we? Yes, we will. I, mean, I think we have to pick a track from Jonesy to play because he's not here. He's not on the phone, so I can't ask him. So, um, there's tracks on here. Do you want to pick one, Kevin? Yeah. Um, how about uh, Waiting For You? Tell me what track number Number is. three, Waiting For You. Waiting For You. Here's Jonesy, and hopefully it'll prompt him to get on the phone. Thanks very much, guys. It's been Thank good to much. see you. I hope Thank you get on at Glastonbury, so I look forward to introducing you again. Unless you're on another stage and really okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for having us. Thank you for having us. Then it might get me on a different stage at some point. <laughs> okay, here's Jonesy. We hope. If it works. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Keep talking, Kevin. Um, shall I sing a song? No, tell a, I'll do what they do at gigs. I'll tell some That's humorous it. joke about why did the um, cabbage cross the road <laughs> Sorry. with a, with a, chi- with a chicken. <laughs> Neither no, do I. So here uh, is... Uh, oh, no, this it's is uh, mental because it, it's the only one I could get to work. <laughs> now I'm back. Here we go now. Turn it up, turn it up, this is my sound Ripping it up, getting all psyched up I'm gonna be blasting through your whole entire town I'm back again, homie, this your thing that I leave This rap music, it's like the air that I breathe One stop performing, one stop rapping The things I quit just make me wanna seize I just put a lot anger like a bone Seeing raging out, so homie, don't be fooled I'm not a quitter, I'm just a determinator I wipe haters out like a younger terminator I'm more determined than ever to wherever I rap Raising the game, someone gives Give me a clap, yeah, yeah. Now I feel wonderful. Now everybody, let's get mental. Yeah, let's get mental. Come on. let's get mental. Yeah, yeah, let's get mental. Come on, let's get mental. I'm 
may sometimes seem a little too crazy But I don't phase me, that's just me The crazy Jonesy who went takes the stage Can't send everybody on a crazy rampage The be like my bros for 4.0 Let's go, let's go and tear off the flow Crazy solos, hands in the air Everybody's watching like we really don't care But no one is like me, I'm one of a kind Like a snowflake, two are never the same I'm alone in the game, one day I hope to Have my name written in a platinum flame Sometimes I think that my ego's so high But I don't care, cause I have the right to be high Cause at the moment, I'm high, not low Actually, in fact, I feel so mental Yeah, let's get mental Of the mic, let it light. Uh, let's make some up tonight. I'm never scared to perform, never scared of myself. Everybody looks at me, thinking Jones and needs help. Cause when I'm at a gig, I'm all over the place. Going all crazy, drunk out of my face. But that's just me, I can't help being crazy. I have a school in my brain, that's why he drops as a baby. Yeah, at least I'm living the life. Not being boring, sitting around the house. I get out there, and I really don't care. People don't like me, they can move away from here. I'm here to stay, I shall never go away. I keep on being me until my dying day. So, what do you say? Should we go to the dance and live life to the full? Let's get mental. Uh, yeah, I'm going a bit mental in the studio, actually, because there's lots of things going on all at the same time, but it's all good fun. Uh, and eight miles high, I've kind of hung around. Because uh, we've got Jonesy on the phone. Hi, Jonesy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? How's everyone? Hi, uh, Jonesy. Very, very good. How are you? Uh, recovering. Yeah, how was it? <laughs> how, Still. How was the shed? Uh, oh, the shed was mental, man. Uh, big audience. And then pretty much what I did afterwards went clubbing until whenever. Really? After <laughs> the gig? <laughs> Yeah, I went clubbing. Good God, I don't know how you do it. I mean, you put in 110% performance at the gig and then you still got energy left. Yeah, I didn't get over until half six in the morning. My word, no wonder you're still recovering. <laughs> so, how was, the, how was the gig, Jones? I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, how how did you feel it went? Uh, it was really good. It was like the longest set I've ever done live. I did about 50 minutes on stage and uh, the crowd was really good. Um, the audience was good and um yeah it was just it was pretty much more about like how nice people were and everything like always like wishing me a happy birthday throughout the night and everything. yeah because so it was, it was really your birthday feel it? welcomed and everything so i really enjoyed it brilliant uh, happy birthday by the way <laughs> thank you i'm hot quarter of a century now yeah <laughs> yeah don't worry about it you got a long way to go to catch me up uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh we got uh, we got to go uh, eight miles high in the studio here you know them the band of course I know them. Yeah. Of course I know them. They're saying, he's saying <laughs> hello. I'll get the lead singer. Put your headphones on for a minute. Because yeah. Jonesy's saying he knows you. So yes, you, you can talk to him. You can hear him on the phone. Yeah, of course you can hear Jonesy. Yeah, go on. Mate, let me, I didn't know it was your birthday today. No, it's not today. Oh, it today. is it not today? We just did a birthday gig, I think. Oh, oh birthday gig. Talk well, a birthday gig slash album launch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, but um, yeah, we've known Jonesy for quite a few, uh, about a few years now, I think. About a year or two. Uh Popped up every now and then at some of our gigs. Yeah, I remember. Eight, I remember you guys eight mile high when you used to do a lot of cover songs like uh, American Idiot and stuff like that. Oh God, don't remind us. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Jonesy, have you done any cover cover songs? I'm not really big on cover songs personally, but I do stuff like Eminem, The Monster. Um, well, I like Eminem, so I like to do Eminem now and again. But I've done stuff like LMFAO, which I won't do anymore. Um, yeah. Because it's like part really, really stupid party stuff. But I'm more, I don't know, I'm not really into cover songs. And you did, did, did you do one with Alexandra as well from, uh, was it, from Norway? Yeah, yeah, we did um, two cover songs together now, I think. It's Hall of Fame and The Monster. 
I mean, Alexandra's doing so well for herself now. Um, he's in this uh, TV show in Norway. Um, oh. It's a bit like uh, X Factorish style. It's not well, it's not really, but it's like to join a boy band and everything and uh, I think he's got a good cho- chance I think he gets signed to a, a label over there called Eccentric Music yeah he's got a kind of a so. Michael Jackson quality to his voice as well hasn't he it has yeah that's so um, he's doing really well for himself and everything so I'm not surprised that's quite an interesting story how you got together with Alexandru do you want to remind us how, how, how it came about <laughs> long time ago now it's three years that is um, it's kind of like um through YouTube is uh, dad like contacted me through YouTube saying my son my son likes your music he wants to work with you on a song so I just replied back saying yeah actually I got this song would you like to do the vocals to the chorus and it just started from there on pretty much oh right that's brilliant um, uh, he's become like good friends I always have a few drinks with uh, Alexandra's dad now and again so that's really good <laughs> yeah okay so what you got coming up, Jones? You want, uh, anything you need to plug? Um, actually, for once in my life, I haven't actually got anything to plug because I'm not on a hiatus for a bit, but I'm just going quiet. Um, my next planned gig, if I'm through, will be Glaston Budget. Sure. Apart from that, there's nothing planned for six months. Okay, uh, and you hopefully apart eight, from eight, working on my next project. Yeah, uh, hopefully eight, eight miles high. I'll be on the I'll be on the same uh, stage as you, or doing the same. Doing the same day, or you'll meet up then, won't you? Probably. I think I think Jonesy did the Icon stage as well, if I'm correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, we were main support on the Saturday night. It was I didn't know it's for then. Painful. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay we've got to move on because we've got another guest coming in very shortly. We're going to play Fight yeah, Back now. Uh, we're going to play Fight Back. Tell us about it. Fight Back. It's about oh gosh, Fight Back. It's about um, fighting up as humans against the governments who think they can control us and everything. Um, not saying all government is bad, not saying that all people in Parliament are bad, but like certain aspects of it, like is our voice really heard in this country? So that's pretty much what the song's about. It's called Fight Back to Fight Back Against It All. Okay, thanks for ringing up, Jonesy. All the best. Uh, see you at Glaston no Budget next Thank year, you. if not before. Cheers, mate. Bye. Uh, cheers. Thank you. Bye. This is my point of view, what I think about the government. I don't mean any offence, but this is just what I think. Can you be free in this world that you see? When it's hard to be who you truly want to be Some streams drift out to sea We all have to bow knee We all have to agree With the governments and the parties I don't know what is happening Where is our freedom of speech? I know it's that the news Keep on covering what people preach People getting together Standing to belittle rights But the media cover the story to say Something totally different Martin Luther King Nelson Mandela These are great leaders that we should be remembered forever Standing for their people, bringing the black and white together But still in state and age, people still fighting each other I heard the other day, someone was getting arrested Standing for a person that was then proven innocent He protested peacefully, but his freedom wiped away His story never lived and never told another day We need to fight back, fight back We need to get our minds back on track We need to fight back Money's put to use It feels we don't have a choice On what that money could do When the money could be used For education and expansion Building a country up Instead of wasting it on a mansion Money could be put to use Building a generation We still have poverty In every single nation We're part of God's creation But we're tearing it apart It really won't be long Until the world would give up War keeps on happening for all land control It really won't be long until the government controls our soul When we're controlled by chips, our thoughts will never be a freedom Some pain for the air to breathe, we're choking like pollution We control like robots, no expression, no emotion 
where we shall be The grimmin rule control our motion Scared up, stand up, let's fight for our rights Let's not let the agenda control our lives We need to fight back, fight back We need to get our minds back on track We need to fight back, fight back We need to get our minds back on track We need to fight back That will live in peace, fight for a world with no war in the streets. People getting along, people happy to see. People being happy, living in the worry. Not to be scared for the next generation. To grow up, be an inspiration to the nation. So people, if you believe, let's stand up together. Let's stand up together. Let's be an aspiration. Let's fight back. Uh, nice to get uh, Jonesy on the phone. Uh, that's a fight back from his new album, which is called uh, Stories. Uh, that's available uh, kind of from where you can get it, really. Uh, but obviously, you'll be here the tracks again on our podcast. Don't forget this program is podcast every week, usually a couple of days later. And uh, Kevin will give us the uh, website address on Facebook. Uh, he's going to do that now. Yeah, he is. I thought I was going to say later. But www.facebook.com forward slash local music show and the number one. And if yeah. you give it a cheeky like while you're there, that'd be much appreciated. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Josie, he'll be uh, uh, hopefully playing at Glaston Budget along with Eight Miles High uh, next year. Well, in the studio now is uh, Snook in. Uh, his name's Joe Dorr. Well, Kevin's just uh, setting up the video because he's going to do a song in just a minute. But Joe, just uh, uh, tell us a bit about yourself, really, because um, I don't know too much about you. Well, uh, wh- when it comes to the music, I'm not Joe. I'm a uh, Homer Shakespeare. Uh, oh yes, I guess, <laughs> well, well, Kevin mentioned <laughs> no, that, well, that, but that's kind of interesting because I've written Joe Dorr now. But uh, what no, is? Uh, tell us about that. Uh, do, we call, do we call you Joe or do we call you Homeless um, <laughs> or Mr. <laughs> Shakespeare? I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm referred to as Mr. Shakespeare sometimes, but I know oh, right. I know little of his work. To be fair, oh, right. just just a standard kind of thing. Um, the name itself was given to my uh, to me by my brother when my beard started coming in. Um, uh, yeah, a bit of Shakespeare look. Definitely. Yeah, yes, um, yes. and uh, I kind of I immediately clicked kind of thing. I thought that's a perfect kind of analogy for. Um, now you've got these big pop stars that do very little for what they get, and then you've got these artists uh, in the local scene that are trying or doing all they can just to like get their music out there, etc. And um, but aren't the big know, artists? Uh, weren't they in the same position one time where they were local and then they suddenly become big because depends other, on the other, artist, other, I think. Yeah, I guess I guess perhaps it does. But don't most local artists like the band I was just uh, talking to kind of have aspirations? I guess to. To be- it depends what he means by big as well, doesn't it? Really. See, this is where the philosophy of it comes in because it's, it's yeah. a bit more. It's avant-gardeism. It's um, music, art, philosophy, um, all sorts of different things. Politics, in particular, as well. Sure. Um, and I, I, I have a why well, not theory. Um, my philosophy on money is that people don't know when to stop. They get enough to live on and then it's like well we could just take a little bit more and then a little bit more if you look at politicians for example you know do you think that they they start well obviously a lot of them started off in private schools and all of that jazz which I'm not necessarily condemning um, it's more the fact that they they were born keep into taking that, but they were keep born taking. In, I mean a lot of them were born into that situation weren't they that's all they know to say but that's why we need artists that aren't going to glorify riches and money um, to you know spread the word that it's not money that matters it's people it's each other and it's you know if i've, I've worked out if um if more people attended local shows if essentially if the music industry was localized yes um cr- audience sharing would be so much easier uh, there will be a larger audience for e- more or less every show it means that money would be pumped into local economy through local venues helping them improve higher better bands so exactly. if you were at the top of the tree, perhaps, then some of the money you make could siphon down to the people at the bottom of the tree. Is that yeah. kind of what you're saying? Essentially, if, even if I take that much. 
Okay. So it's uh, I'd rather it, give it, it away. It's going to be a debate we can go for ages. That's why I'm quite regretting uh, the two-hour bus journey. <laughs> <laughs> but is, 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 a different bus. is that the sort of thing you write your songs about, then? Yeah, I've got, I've got a few messages. songs. Um, cause, uh, my songs are all quite... Um, uh, uh, well, some are particularly ambiguous, so there's not so much. Um, but they can adapt to different, um, you know, uh, personal emotions or th- you know philosophies or anything like that um you know i've got i've got one called poor man which i rarely play um but that's 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 about uh, that's essentially su- not proven suggesting that money isn't everything that it's being made out to be yeah for, or everything you know i'm yeah, I agree with what you're saying uh, earlier that money, you, once you get it, you want more. You you get a bigger mortgage which sucks up all that money, so you need some more, yeah. and and, it's, and it's, it never stops. You know, yeah, yeah, but if you've got a family, you aspire to look after your family. So I can see why uh, you would try to do that, because you want to provide for your family. Uh, isn't that a natural thing to want to do, though? I'm not saying, yeah, but is it money that supplies for the family, or is it you? good point well yeah, but do your family get... need all these trinkets and fancy things or do they need you to be there do they need your support do you want to go and take a walk well in the yeah park? yeah but you're talking about work home balance there aren't you like, kind of a, a little bit of no balancing he's, he's the talking two. about family I'm, I'm with with joe on that one yeah how do you mean he's talking about family well like you know what's important to family is it is it money or is it just spending time with them so well i've talked to my kids quite a lot and that, that very often it's uh, how much can you spend on my present for christmas so yeah I, but that's uh, that's but that's, that's reality the world we're living but that, in at the moment, that's reality isn't it? though is it at the moment well yeah. only what we, well that reality is what you make of it isn't it <laughs> hey this could go on for well, a long time as, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what's actually important year. though getting presents for christmas oh, anyway yeah but all spend well, it, well, it, if, is to if, th- it is to them if you gave them presents and didn't spend any time with them then what would they want they still want presents for Christmas. Oh, and they'd be all right about never seeing you. Well, I never said that, <laughs> but I didn't say that. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's move on to the song. Yeah, <laughs> hi. Um, well, this one's one that I wrote about uh, five or six years ago with my second band, um, who called Danglers or Sons of Caroline at the time. Um, we were quite punk rocky kind of thing. It's called Pirate Song. Uh, you can hear the single on my Reverb Nation account as well. Um, I've done lots of extra production on it, etc. But yeah, I do hope you enjoy it. It's about revolution, Great. so to say. Before Russell Brand did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sailing on this pirate ship And I take a sip All the captain's rum Changes plans And he takes his hostage Seems so smart But still so dumb Negotiate within our sons Where's all your brilliance? We got your solution Join our revolution Tell him to relax Take an axe to the captain's neck Ostracize the leader Just patronize and feed her Turn this ship to a shipwreck Go down with your ship, oh captain, cause here's a trick, you're on your own for this trip. We got your solution, join our revolution, come take it down now, enough. Nothing to be proud Sailing on this pirate ship 
kind of take a sip while the captain's rum Sailing on these deadly high seas till my deeds are done Sailing on this pirate ship and I take a sip of the captain's rum Sailing on these deadly high seas till my deeds are done there we go. Thank you very much indeed for that. Sorry, uh, I kind of booked that up. I do it sorry? better live. I'm, I'm in a bit of an angst. Today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Uh, yeah, so thanks very much uh, uh, for coming. We've still got a bit that of time. Was... Um, you want to you want to fit in another song for you? Um, I could try for you. I could try doing that poor man one, but I'm not too I'm not too sure if how well I do in A minor. It's it's a bit of an awkward key for me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but before uh, you do though, um, tell us a little bit about your band. Paizo, yes. uh, we yeah. rec- well, we were actually, um, our last gig this year, before we take a hiatus and a redevelopment, um, we are gigging with Ash Mammal at The Musician on 29th, it's £5 entry, it's going to be an incredible gig, they've got a band... 29th of November? Yes, that's the one, they've got a band from Leeds, I can't remember what their name, Of Colours I think it is, oh. uh, which are a phenomenal band, I've had a listen to them as well, um, but no, it's, it's quite experimental, we mix, we mix metal, we mix kind of a jazzy indie kind of muse to it, and there's, there's all sorts in there. Um, but yeah, yeah, that sounds interesting, and, and instrumental, instrumental as well. Though, yeah. Um, a good good 25 minute set of just instrumental tunes there's some slap pop bass it's, yeah um i mean T- timo he, he does a kind of scratching sounds on like as if you would on a um as, as, like dj scratches yeah. on his guitar and everything it's, it's wow yeah um, so where's that gig uh the musician How's on the 29th musician? november with okay. Ash Mammal. That sounds brilliant. They're an incredible band themselves as well, really, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, are they, is, so presumably they're instrumental through their own choice. They're not looking for a singer or anything. Uh, Paizo? Yeah. Uh, that's what we're working on. I think ah, we're going right. to be working on um, where, where our di- what the direction we're going to is, really. Ah, I see. Um, it was the last kind of year or the last however long we've been doing it. Um, I think two and a half years, two years now. Um, it's essentially been live... Uh, band development, live artist development, and you know, um, so catch us mm. before we leave. Yeah, we'll with do. what we've got. So, gig wise for yourself, where do you tend to to play? Uh, typically, the sound house. I go to open mics because I think that you yeah. know, there's a lot of developing artists there. For example, there's as a lot well. of freedom um, in that, isn't it? As yeah, well, yeah, yeah, enormous. Because you, you, it's a good place for for um, already kind of a, I wouldn't say renowned, but already developed artists. It's also good for them to just practice new songs and showcase old material if they wish as well. You know, we were we were, we were looking at trying to play some recordings. So where where did you do those? And what, what? Um, in my room actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, I worked I worked for about a year, saved up and got um, a computer, Cubase, and um, eventually an audio interface. Uh, so I've I've done single tracks throughout. You kind of learnt yourself, do you? Kind of taught yeah, yourself. Essentially. Well, yeah. no, no. I went to college for uh, music technology, music performance, that performing helps. arts. Yes, yeah, enormously. Um, but I, I've never really enjoyed the conventional side of. I usually with education, I usually just take what I know I need from it, um, and it's worked out because I've got at least a minimum pass on each time, at least. So. And uh, <laughs> inspiration for you, where, where, where does that come from, really? Anywhere and everywhere. Like music is music to me. I listen to it all and anything. Um, and you know, it's, it, I, ju- I judge a piece of music on the music itself as opposed to the artist who might have done it. Um, although I don't really appreciate or respect the music that goes through so many filters of. So, what, so, so when you were, I mean, you obviously bought records when you were younger. So, what, what did you buy when you were younger? Then? Arctic Monkeys were the biggest ones for me, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when they hit Humbug, like Humbug was the one that kind of made it for me because it, it was just a complete kind of. Uh, U-turn almost. So they just they took their sound yeah, and yeah, they did change it, didn't they? Yeah, yeah enormously. Yeah. Um, otherwise, um, lots of the oldies really. Zeppelin, who yeah, um, still currently getting into Django Reinhardt, etc. And uh, Tom Waits a bit more as well, actually. Um, but yeah, quality artists. So, really any nice. gigs you got coming up that you need to plug? Um, no, but I'm well, not at the moment, at least, sadly. Um, but no, I am planning on. Uh, putting on an acoustic show on the 27th at the Font in Leicester as well um, that's going to be an acoustic show and then another one on the 30th of February uh, where I'm going to try getting some more heavier bands on that's the 27th of November is it? Uh, no 27th of January, January and right. 
um, 30th of February. Okay, in the new year. I was going to say, you've, I've seen your name uh, ho- as Homeless Shakespeare around right. quite a bit in quite a few yeah. venues now, not around town. Essentially, yeah. I've, yeah. I've gigged at a v- various amounts of venues, but not Which ones would you say your favourite ones <sighs> and why? Uh, I'd go for the cookie because the sound there is incredible. It's in mm. a prime location as well in the middle of High Street. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, sh- it's a shame there's not enough people who don't always go to shows or don't often go to shows can't just go in you know enjoy the live music it's, yeah, it's hard free. to infuse people because you've got um, to pay yeah, it and the then venues, it's pie bar who does yeah. that actually yes which is, that's true they're yeah. free aren't they yeah they do brilliantly right. okay well thanks for coming that's about all we've got time for on the program uh, uh guitar you've got a bit of writing on that have you i've just noticed uh, yes um, <laughs> that's that's the art side of it as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah decorated yeah. guitar right. uh and uh kevin well thanks very much for coming in too uh that's all right uh but you were supposed to all right uh, you weren't invited <laughs> Uh, you going to any gigs this week? Um, possibly. I'll have to check my diary. It's, it's all a bit of a blur. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was going to say, actually, uh, a video of your previous song that you've just performed in the studio will be available on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com, a local music show, and the number one. OK. Uh, so Giovanni is coming up next. Uh, that's after the 7 o'clock news from uh, myself and Kevin and uh, the guests. Uh, thanks for joining us. And the news is next. <laughs>